In our last episode, we finally did everything we needed to do with both factions to break into Vault 79. Now it's time for the heist, and we'll be exploring the break into Vault 79 from both sides, starting with Foundation. With Hornwright rescued and Motherload repaired, we can head back to the basement of Freddy Fears to meet the crew. Upon arrival, we hear Motherload. I hope my suit doesn't frizz out on me at the wrong time. That tunnel looks ominous. Hopefully you won't encounter any issues. I'm not a fan of guns, but I'm glad to have one in here. I wish we could have spared a few more fighters. Looks like Motherload was just leaving. She's already made a tunnel for us. We find everybody here waiting for us. Jen in her stealth armor and Hornwright with Fields gazing down the tunnel. When ready to move forwards, we can talk with Paige. We need to get started. Dr. Hornwright told us what happened. Filthy raiders. Nothing but a bunch of low-life scabs. We stand together and they'll never break us. United we stand and all that? Sounds good to me. Ready as I'll ever be. Copy that. Locked and loaded. Let's crack this vault. Looks like they're waiting for us to take point. And so we can head into the tunnel. Damn! Look at this. According to Paige, all reinforcements thin out deeper into the mountain. Motherload knows the way. I never liked putting any faith in a machine I couldn't take apart myself. I never like putting faith in a man whose first instinct is to break everything he sees. Do you know what's great about being around you guys? All the love in the air. Along the way, we have to kill a number of critters. Ugh, Southfield always dies at the worst times. Just once, I'd like a mission to send me through an empty field on a sunny day. Aw, what's the matter, Sergeant? Afraid of the dark? Eventually, we arrive at a subterranean chamber filled with mole miners. It looks like Motherload's digging may have collapsed it. Their only way out was through us. Those things don't have infested. Such strange creatures. Always digging. What the hell are they digging for? And why are they so pissed off about it? We did just run a 12-ton drilling machine through their front door. Apparently that was like uh, a mole miner city or something. We never really get any more information about what they were doing down here. We see Motherlode's tunnel moving off to the west. Continuing forward, eventually we arrive at the Motherlode. Motherload, talk. Motherload has affinity with objective. Motherload requests user clarification. I don't owe you an explanation. Just drill. Motherload rejects user. Motherload would break user. But compliance is required. When we find the turrets, cover me while I disarm. Was she so emotional because we chose all of the empathetic options during the maze? Motherload's drills spin back into action, and she moves forward. Motherload's systems are redlining. That... It was awesome. She's offline, and likely beyond repair. With that, we break into Vault 79 and encounter robotic security. There's the grid. I need a minute to call my nurse. All you have to do is walk through. What's the problem? The suit is an heirloom. An antique? 
If it fritzes out while I'm in one of those grids, it will look like I went through a cheese grater. You're just like Goldilocks. You can't move too fast or too slow. Not helping, Radcliffe. You have to move just right. Seriously, not helping. Despite her momentary lapse of confidence, she waltzes right through. It works. I'm through. Thank God. What are you waiting for? Find a way to turn off this laser grid. Relax, Radcliffe. I'm on it. Good news! Someone left this logged in. Where is the grid control? Oh, there it is. Oops. Oops? What do you mean, oops? Oops is bad! This can't be good. More robots! I can't leave this terminal! It might lock me out! Jen's oops triggers more robotic security. They swarm into the room and we have to fight them off. Sorry about the oops. Once it triggered, I had to wait for the security boss to go away before I could finish. Even then, it locked me out after I neutralized the laser grid. Hey, no problem. We almost died, that's all. We need to talk. Sounds like Penny's got her feathers all ruffled. But before we chat with Penny, we can explore this room. We'll start going left of the laser grid and move counterclockwise. On a console to the left of the laser grid is a note. Garrison's journal. We just made it into Vault 79 with as much gold as we could haul. Now for the hard part. We have to make this place a home for an extended period. We have no idea when we'll be able to safely leave. We have plenty of water, but food will be tight. With several dozen agents to feed, we can't afford to waste any of it. I've asked Digger to see if he can get a hydroponic garden up and running. As the AC, my orders are to remain here undetected until such time as radiation levels fall to safe levels and order is restored. With luck, we should get the okay from government in a few months, a year at the most. Until then, the radios are under lock and key, and the door to the outside will remain closed. So the gold is here. It was being protected by the government, and it sounds like its guardians are still here. Or at least they were. Could they still be alive? Near to where we found the note, we find a maintenance room. This is locked with a skill level 2 lock terminal. Or a skill level 2 lock that we can pick, which I did while they were talking. Heading inside, we find a few containers and a little bit of scrap. A minigun lying on the ground and a little bit of ammunition. Not much else. Having you along makes me feel... safe. I mean, Radcliffe is fine and all. But... He's not you. Mother Lowe made a hell of a racket. So much for the element of surprise. Moving counterclockwise, we see crates and robot repair stations piled around. A door that's blocked up and a staircase going up. Heading upstairs, we can loot some robot wreckage. We see a path off to the south. This leads to the entrance of Vault 79. But we're going to explore this in detail with the Raiders, so we'll skip it for now. So moving west, we see a closed door that we can't access, and peering through a window, we see an auto dock back there. This is also part of the Raider plot, so we don't need to access it now. We see a platform to the north with no way up, but we can use our jetpack to scoot across. Here we find a skill level one locked footlocker, a couple of blocked off doors, and some scrap. That's it. So hopping back down to the ground when ready, we can talk with Penny. Oh, this is no place for me. Well, this is clearly a dangerous operation from this point on. I'm an engineer, not a soldier. It's time I headed back to Foundation. But what if we need you? You're the only one with the technical knowledge of this place. Hey, what am I, chop liver? I didn't want to risk losing Penny, so I said, good idea. Foundation can't afford to lose you. I'll give Paige a status update when I get back. Good luck to all of you. Coming up on the laser turrets. Are you ready, Radcliffe? Just stand back and watch the magic happen. 
Oh, brother. With that, Jen and Radcliffe run through the laser grid. Meanwhile, the Raiders meet at the front door to Vault 79. Using the key code Meg gave us, we can head through the front door and take the elevator down. We find the Raider crew assembled before the door to Vault 79. All right, everyone's here. Y'all ready to rock this joint? Mm-hmm. You know me, Meg. I'm always ready. Except when you ain't. Harsh, Meg. That was one time. One time? What happened? Eh, I'll tell you when you're older. Last talk! Gun heavy! Need to unload bullets into something and make lighter! Gail's right. Let's get a move on. Just give Lou the word when you're good to go, 7-6. I'm good to go. Turning around, we can talk to Lou. Ian's ready or what? I need to speak with you about something regarding our arrangement. Not now. We got work to do. Don't worry, I ain't letting you forget about it. I'll come find you after the goes has gone. That's in reference to our promise to kill him, to put him out of his misery after the vault job. He's not in a place to talk about it right now. I'm ready, Lou. Let's blow open this door. You got it. Stand back. Don't want no one standing in the blast zone. Standing back, Lou readies the detonator. All right, Johnny, Gail, you two. Oh, and me. Rara too. Not leaving Rara behind. Fine, yeah. You three go on ahead and take care of security. Gail, you're responsible for keeping Rara safe. Rara always safe with Gail. You got it, boss lady. Now let's go. Seven six. Can I talk to you real quick? Oh, okay. While we are talking, the rest of the crew heads in. I gotta stay here and guard your butts till I'm confident we're in the clear, but I got an important request for you. With Johnny asking for such a big cut, I want you to keep an eye on him. You let me know if he doesn't pull his weight. If he wants to keep his value, he's gotta earn it. Do you want me to do anything about it? No, I don't want you to do a damn thing. Just watch and tell me. He's still a valuable asset, so I'm the one who decides what to do with him. I'll let you know if he doesn't do his job. Thanks. You good otherwise? Are you just going to stand guard out here? That's what I said. I got your back in case anyone else gets any ideas like Lev did. I'll come find you when it's time. Is Lou coming too? He said he's got to make sure there's no structural weakness from the blast or something like that. He's going to stay behind and rig up support if we need it, so no one gets trapped inside. Are you sure about letting Rara in there with us? She'll be fine. Remember, Gail doesn't go anywhere without that girl. She'll keep Ra Ra safe. Besides, that kid's always surprising me with how resourceful she can be. Never know when she'll come in handy. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, get to it, 7-6. Make us rich. Our crew's been fighting vault security without us. Now we can join the fight. Looks like all this fuss has been over two turrets. It's more than that to do turrets down, we can head through the vault door, and we arrive at the entrance to Vault 79. This is that big vault entrance room that I skipped over while exploring the room we broke into with Foundation. Gail and Johnny move through a door to the north. We'll come back to explore the entrance in a moment, but we'll follow them for now so we don't miss any dialogue. Door shut tight. See if you can open it remotely. Maybe there's a terminal somewhere. We'll guard it in case anything's on the other side. Gail ready to destroy more robots! Gail's the best at destroying robos! Johnny! You're okay at it, I guess. Hey, I'm pretty damn good at it. I just don't have a giant minigun like Gail does. That sound like excuses! Okay, fine. Give me the minigun, and I'll show you. 
No, you too weak. You just drop it and make it break. <laughs> you're just afraid I'm right. Well, I think you're both right. That doesn't even make any sense. Now Gale think Rara is right. <laughs> Come on, Gale. He's starting to get mad. We should stop messing with him. <laughs> I'm not getting mad. You know what? I'm just gonna stand here and wait for the door to open. You sure you strong enough to do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Laugh it up, kiddo. After that bit of back and forth, we can begin to explore. Moving counterclockwise, we find one wooden crate. A ruined Assaultron that we didn't destroy. Must have died in the Vault Door Blast, I guess. We find a room to the south with a Protectron burning. There is a terminal here, but we'll come back to it. After looting our first aid kit on the wall, we can move out of this room. We find a locker room with mostly empty lockers, one metal box on the ground, and oil covering the floor. Passing through a door to the south, we arrive back at the vault entrance. We see the check-in desks here and the big vault button. Nothing we can interact with. After scouring the room, we can go through a door to the east. This appears to be a bit of a supply room. We find one skill level two locked footlocker and a bunch of scrap lying on the shelves. Out of this room and continuing counterclockwise, we find a door to the north, but this is locked with a ID card reader. Wonder how we can find a way in there. Continuing the loop, we move back into the room with the oil on the floor, and this puts us through the vault's radiation scanners. We arrive back at the crew. So heading back into the room with the terminal, we can access it. But first, we find a Vault 79 Facilities Management Keycard. Ah, I think I know what this does. Heading back to the room with the ID card reader, sure enough, we can use it. Inside, we find some shelves, a couple of containers to loot, a 10 millimeter pistol on a desk, a lunch pail, and a circuit breaker lid against the wall. Ah, I bet this has something to do with that terminal. So heading back to the room with the burning Protectron, we can access the terminal. Licensed to United States government by vault Tech Corporation. We find two options in the first, door controls. Error, door control systems offline. Security wing entrance status alert, maglock engaged. Error, security wing entrance door malfunction. Flip breaker in facilities management room to off position. And there it is. Backing out, we can explore decontamination controls. Error, do you wish to alert vault Tech maintenance personnel? Um, I'm gonna give this one a hard no. Last thing we need is more robots. So, heading back into the facilities room, we can open the circuit breaker lid to flip the circuit breaker. Then we can race back to our crew as fast as we can so we don't miss any dialogue. But as soon as the door opens, they race on through and they come under fire from robots and laser turrets. They immediately move into a room to the west. Ah, but a door slides shut. We can't get in. I tried this another time and I raced ahead of them, but there's actually an invisible wall here. So no matter what we do, we can't get in this room. But we do have to destroy this round of robotic vault security. Moving back to the room that our crew went into, we see that it's that room with the auto dock and the intercom that we saw when we were here with Foundation. We have entered the same room that Foundation broke into with Motherload. Oh, come on, don't, don't do me like this, you punk of junk. You want Gale smash it up real good? That would just make it worse. What should Gale and Rara do? Nothing, just... Oh, hey, you, Vault Dweller! Accessing the intercom. A slight hitch in the plan. I'm a little worried. Should I go get help? Hey, so we hit a little snag. It happens. I'm good at what I do because I don't back down from a challenge. I'm not worried about this. So neither should you be. 
Well, what's it supposed to do? Well, it's supposed to scan the person and connect them with someone on the other end. Uh, audio only. Now, I presume they'll unlock the way forward if we can answer some questions. Now, with all the automation around here, I guess they were worried about someone sending a robot in to rob the place. Uh, having done something like that before myself, I can see why. What happened to the plan? Let's keep moving. A uh, funny thing. A long time ago, I broke into a similar system up at the Federal Reserve in New York. Uh, this here biometric scanner must run off some sort of central database. Seems it can detect a known felon, and it's completely locked me out. We need it in order to get in. I thought there wasn't a system you couldn't beat. Hey, that was the only one. I was young and stupid back then, and I only got caught because my crew bailed on me. I've learned a lot since then. I'll get this one. Let me try to fix it. I doubt I'm in their database. Sorry, no can do. Room sealed tight. Must be one of the security measures. <laughs> so, are we just screwed now? Now, hold on. Can you do something to fix this mess? Yeah, don't get your unmentionables in a bunch. I've got this under control. I'm gonna give it another go, and we're gonna get out of here. Getting bored! How long this gonna take? Just sit tight. I've almost got this. Tampering detected. Further tampering will be met with lethal force. Maybe you shouldn't mess with it. Yeah, maybe you should shut up, kid. Because I can't think with you blabbering on like that. Just a minor inconvenience, that's all. What's wrong now? This system's more advanced than I expected. It's full of countermeasures. While not unbeatable, it's gonna be tricky, and it sounds like there isn't much room for error. We find two options. We could lie and say, I trust you. You should keep at it. Thanks for the vote of confidence, but I've gotta be more careful about this. I assume you're okay with that and not trying to rush me for some reason. We can pass a charisma check of four to say, of course, I just thought you were the expert with this kind of thing. I am. Don't you start doubting me now, Vault Dweller. Sit back and watch old gentleman Johnny show this system who's boss. Okay, good. I bypassed the lockout timer. I'm accessing the root directory. Just gotta reroute the logic gate here. Shit. Ah. Uh, I think Johnny's dead. Huh? Johnny lost all blood. Don't think Gail can put it back. What do now? Johnny's dead? No! I was understandably dissatisfied with this option, so I left the vault and tried again. Instead of saying that we trust him and that he should keep at it, we can say, that seemed pretty serious. I think we need to come up with another plan. I'm listening, but I haven't given up just yet. We could again go Johnny into continuing his hack, or we could say, let Gail try to trick the biometric scanner. Trust me, we can coach her through it. It's crazy, but it might work. As long as the big oaf doesn't break it first. All right, Gail. Hop in the booth and listen to me. You always mean to Rara and Gail. No listening to you. Oh, come on. You know I don't mean it. I'm just joking around. No. No. Uh. Is Johnny really always mean to you? Who wouldn't say always? You just told me this morning you'd throw my bunny in the poop water because I asked too many questions. And you always say Gail is stupid. Okay, fine. Whatever. Listen to the vault dweller then. I'll just be over here twiddling my thumbs, I guess. Good luck, vault dweller. Um, I still expect my full cup, by the way. Gail, remember how I saved Ra-Ra? Will you do this for me? Ha! Huh. Be 
Even though you're not always nice to Rara, you still help. Gail will do this one thing for you. Okay, what do? Is there another way for me to get inside? Door closed tight. Try to open, but can't. Door too strong. Can Rara use the booth? We tried that already. She's too short for the scanner to work. Now, the system flagged her as a potential threat, and that's what triggered the robots you presumably had to fight on the way here. I don't know. Let's see what Johnny thinks. Uh, send Galen to the booth. It's gonna scan her, make sure she's not a robot, then check her against the database. Assuming she passes, we'll find out if anyone is alive in here. Then it'll be up to your smooth talking to coach her and convince them to let us in. Yeah, easy. First, you need to enter the biometric scanner booth. Then, just follow what I say. Okay. Scanning. Biological life form detected. Checking database. Identity unknown. Adding to database. Please, speak your name. Uh, Gail, uh, Smith. Gail, uh, Smith. Registering, Gail, uh, Smith. Connecting to Vault Command Center. Connecting. Connecting. No response. Attempting connection to Auxiliary Operations Center. Connecting. Connecting. Uh, I guess we were wrong. Everyone's dead after all. Connection established. This is Agent in Charge Derek Garrison. Call me AC. Who am I speaking to? And what's your purpose in coming here? We can pass a luck check of four to say, tell him your name isn't important and you're just here for the gold. Your name not important and you just here for gold. For the love of... Don't repeat exactly what was said, Gail. Put it in your own words. <laughs> You're not wrong, son. The purpose of this vault is strictly on a need-to-know basis. And you know, so you must be someone important. Did you hear the distress call? And speak up. You're coming over the microphone a little gobbled. Tell him you don't know anything about a distress call, but say help is here. No distress call, but help is here. Good. I was testing you because your connection's been flaky and some of your responses sounded suspicious. A real agent would know we don't have a way to send out a distress call. So you must have been sent by the remote monitoring team on HQ. It took you fellas long enough to get here and help us out of our situation. Meet up at the Auxiliary Operations Center and I'll fill you in. In the meantime, I'll disable security in that wing so you can get here. Other than that, you're on your own. Any questions? Ask him what the problem is. What is problem? We're stuck where we are, unable to roam the vault freely. I'll explain in more detail when you get here. Ask him why he can't open the doors. Why not open other doors? We're in severe lockdown, son. Security's so tight right now, the robots will shoot anything that moves. It's only through some emergency loophole that I've got access to that one security checkpoint. So, consider yourselves lucky. The robots. Ask if he can do something about all the robots. What about robots? Somebody's full of them. They're automated security countermeasures in case of a breach. Anyone not on the list of approved personnel is subject to lethal force. And with no way to access said list, I'm afraid you may need to disable them manually through lethal force of your own. Just keep in mind, you will be destroying government property. Say you'll be there as soon as possible. No questions. Be there soon. Roger that. You are to proceed to my position as directly as possible. Understood? You'll have to figure out a way to get into the Overseer's office to open the door in the atrium. 
Don't touch anything not mission critical. AC out. Okay, yeah, buddy. We'll be sure not to touch anything. You believe that, Joker? Well, now I want to touch everything! Gale too good? You were great, Gale. The best! Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get moving. Heading down the stairs, we can pass through the laser grid. And here we have to fight through more robots. Meanwhile, the Foundation settlers also pass through the same laser grid. On the other side of the grid, we find a lot of scrap, a terminal that we can't access, but the vault door leading downstairs is locked. Here, Radcliffe finds a console. You should take cover, though, just in case. Okay, turrets disabled. I'm opening the door now. Radcliffe! I thought you said the Electrical grid should overload the banks. I've never seen turrets. These super turrets absolutely tore me up. Even though I was in a full suit of T-51B power armor, I ran for cover and healed up. But it wasn't long before Radcliffe managed to get the patch working. We hear the turrets attacking something else, and the robots we heard go silent. The ceiling-mounted turrets no longer attack us. And heading down the stairs, we find that the Robco turrets have destroyed the robots that spawn down here. The tools Radcliffe got from Robco worked. Our path is now much easier. But the Crater Raiders find a very different story. There is one skill level 2 locked door against the eastern wall. Inside we find a small supply room, some scrap, one ammo canister, and a footlocker. Back out into the hallway, and heading down to the bottom of the stairs, we see a big door leading to the atrium, and a door to the left leading to security. Moving into security, we find more scrap, a window overlooking the atrium, and a few containers. Here we find a few toys, a wooden crate, and that's about it. To open the door to the atrium, we need to access the nearby wall-mounted atrium access terminal. Here, we can open the door. Heading inside, both Foundation and Crater trigger atrium security. Warning! Atrium security triggered. Defense measures activated. All unauthorized personnel will be terminated. Rara stands by a nearby ventilation shaft, and here she waits for us. But with Foundation, Radcliffe runs off. I'm going to the Overseer's office. I think I can open that door from there. You and Jen should set up by the door, and there's something waiting on the other side. Why can't there just be a button to open these doors? Lock and load! I'm pretty sure we have incoming. Radcliffe opens the door from the Overseer's office, and out swarms a stream of ghouls.
With the ghouls dead and residential open, we can first stop and explore this atrium. Going counterclockwise, we find a vault kitchen. You'd think we could find a lot of pre-war food here, but not a lot. I found three cans and that's about it. There is one randomized recipe on the kitchen counter and behind a glass pitcher, a note. Cole Carver's journal. We've been locked up in this place for a year now. AC lets us listen to radio signals, but he's locked up the transmitter. The only thing we hear is static and the occasional plea for help. I'm pretty sure the war has caused a complete breakdown of society. We're all going a little bit nuts in here. We need to get out. Three agents have already taken their own lives. I've pleaded with AC to send one of us out to scout, but he always says, Slick, that would just be a death sentence and you know it. A part of me thinks dying out there under the sky and with the sun on my skin would be better than staying in here. Out of the kitchen and turning right, we find a sealed off door, one more ghoul, and a number of dead secret service agents. Perhaps these are the agents that took their own lives, or perhaps they died to robot security. We find a staircase leading up to the overseer's office and a few more rooms to the right on this upper platform, but we'll go to the overseer's office first. Here we find a rather lavish overseer's office. Inside a bookshelf cabinet, we find a shooting range password. This will come in handy later. There is a bunch of scrap, and then on a table we find a holotape, First Days in Vault 79. Just finished offloading before the big drop. Even here in the vault, we can hear the nukes going off. Command says it should be safe to go topside in 6 to 12 months. Meanwhile, we'll start shuffling gold bars into the operations shaft. <sighs> Even if we could go topside shortly, you can bet the former depository is just a slag heap. The gold is probably going to stay here for a long time. There is an overseer's terminal here, but it's inaccessible. Inside the overseer's bedroom, we find a skill level 2 locked box safe, some randomized junk, and a few toys on the bed. And that's it for the overseer's office. Heading downstairs, we can continue to explore this upper platform. Immediately to the left, we find a supply room and a locker room, just random scrap. Then heading out into the left, we find maintenance. Here we find a number of workstations, a really useful find for breaking down all of that scrap. An armor workbench, weapons workbench, tinkerer's workbench, and power armor workstation. But frustratingly, no cooking station. There's no way to grill up any meat we might have carried with us. Heading out and continuing left, we find another door, but this is sealed. We can't get it open. And heading down the stairs back to the ground level, we find yet another door to the left that's also sealed. This leaves one section of the atrium left to explore to see what's against the western wall. Here we see a closed door, and just outside, the firing range terminal, which we can now access with the shooting range password. Feel free to use this practice range during off hours. If door is locked, see Vault Overseer to gain entry. Be safe. We can access security door control and open the door. Heading inside, we find a couple of containers to the left with a first aid kit, a few minor weapons scattered around, but a bunch of military ammo bags, great for ballistic weave. There's an ammo canister, a weapons workbench, two more ammo canisters in a corner, and a couple boxes of ammunition lying around. The shooting range itself is empty, except for a couple of rad roaches. Back out in the atrium, we find two bathrooms against the southern wall. The stalls are all empty in both of them, and the mirrors can't be accessed. All we find is one first aid kit on the wall of the men's restroom. When ready, we can pass through the double doorway towards residential. But things are a bit trickier for the raiders at Crater. No one can open the door from the overseer's office, and so it's up to Ra Ra. You want me to go into the vent, don't you? No. Yes. You don't sound very sure. Let me help. Is that okay? Of course it is. I like going in the vents. It's fun. Yes. Yes, I knew it. You need me to go up to the overseer's room and open the way forward. I heard the man. I'm little, not deaf. Should I open any of the other rooms here too? Yes, there might be stuff inside we could use. On second thought, no. You were kind of mean when you helped me before. I'm not going to do anything extra for you. Oh no! Because I was so mean to Rara inside Grafton Steel, she's not going to help me out. And I don't have a character who was nice to her, so I don't know what she would have said here. 
At any rate, when she climbs inside, she triggers another robot spawn. Thought you could pull a fast one. What's not today? How dare you start a damn robot? <laughs> And with that, she opens the door to residential. Moving forward, instead of ghouls, the raiders encounter more robots. <laughs> with the robots dead, at the bottom of the staircase, we find a barracks terminal to the right. This presumably opens the door to the barracks, which I already found open in my game. Inside the barracks, we find minor scrap, a couple of foot lockers, and looking out the window to the east, we find Rara waiting for us. But more importantly, for my squishy gunslinger, we find beds, where I was able to heal on up. Out of the barracks and around the corner, we bump into Rara. I see some pretty good stuff in that room, but I'd really only do that for my best friends, and you're only an okay friend. Sorry. Ha <laughs> ha, kids got you there. Oh, I'm starting to like her style. Told you, should have been gooder to Rara. Oh no, we find another barracks here, but the door's locked, and my character didn't have any hacking or lockpicking skills. Thankfully, my power armor character did. Inside, we find some random scrap, a couple of foot lockers, and a few lockers. Really, nothing of interest. Of course, I suppose it's possible that the raiders would have found something impressive in this room that doesn't spawn here for the settlers. We do find a game of hangman being played on a chalkboard, and that's about it. Heading out and moving right, we see another room across the hall to the north that we can't access, and then a room to the southeast. But instead of waiting quietly for us to get close, like the raiders do, the settlers at Foundation rush on ahead. And if they had any dialogue during this moment, I missed it. This room isn't even worth it. We don't find any lore, no foodstuffs, just a little bit of scrap. By getting this far, however, we complete all that glitters. And by siding with the settlers, we get a worker outfit and matching worker hat. And now we can fit in at foundation just like one of the settlers. Once the rooms are fully explored, we can head down the stairs to arrive in a large room where we find more dead Secret Service agents, ammo scattering the ground, and a man wearing sunglasses waiting for us behind some glass. However, the raiders find this door shut, so we can again talk with Rara to see if she can help us out. I don't think the door opens from this side. I know, I know. I'll go get this door open too. See you on the other side. She again heads into a nearby vent, and we can listen to her clamber through. This looks like the place, and that looks like the guy. I think you should talk to him, Hotshot. Huh, we arrive in the same room and stand before the man on the other side of the glass wearing sunglasses. Getting this far with the Raiders also completes buried treasure. And instead of the worker outfit, we get the fashionable Raider outfit and hat. Either way, at this point, both factions begin the quest, Secrets Revealed. Rescue the trapped vault dwellers. It's time to have a chat with them, and our companions from both factions chime in with their own thoughts, which I'll splice in at the right moments. I can't believe it. Someone found us. I guess miracles do happen. There are people down here. Well, look at that. Fancy suits and all. Never underestimate the power of greed, Slick. You're such a cynic, AC. <laughs> They're here to rescue us. I don't know how all you vault people stay sane being cooped up for so long. By their clothing, I say they've been here since before the war. Let's find out. 
We established you're not an official rescue team, so are you here for the gold? To help us? Or maybe it's just sheer coincidence? Who are you guys? We're what's left of the Secret Service. As part of the Treasury Department, we look after the nation's currency, as well as protecting its leaders. When it looked like everything was going sideways, the government ordered all the gold reserves moved to Vault 79. We were put here to protect it. From people like you, to be honest. What happened down here? We were doing routine work in this part of the vault when the reactor went. Next thing we knew, Half our people were turned into monsters, trying to kill us. Worse, the fighting activated the security systems and robots. It was either lock ourselves in here or die. That was almost three months ago. We're running out of food and water, so it's a good thing you showed up. We could say, why can't we do both? An opportunist? I can work with that. <laughs> or yeah, we're here for the gold. Greed! Wins every time. You lose, Slick. Ah, oh, man. It's your lucky day. The only way to the gold is to restore the power so the doors will open. Once that happens, we can get back to the safe part of the vault. Normally, I'd put a bullet in you if you tried to take our gold. But there's been enough death lately. And I'm not sure I'd win that battle. So the gold is yours, if you can get us out of here. I can open the door to the reactor using emergency power, but that's it. With that, we can turn around and head up the staircase to the northwest to figure out how to restore power. But it's here, during the raider path, that Gale takes us aside. Now that it's safe, I take Rara back to Meg and wait with her. No need for us here. Do we have to? I want to sneak around some more and fight more robos and find the treasure! No, Rara, we go. Too much radiation there. You end up looking like Lou. Now, come. Oh, fine. But you gotta promise to take me somewhere fun when we get back home. Okay, Rara. We do that. Promise. Looks like it's just me and Johnny. But with the settlers, we get accompanied by both Radcliffe and Jen. Heading towards the staircase to the northwest, we find a skill level 2 locked door in the wall to the west. Inside we find a couple of containers, some scrap, a footlocker, and on the table, a holotape. Reginald Stone's journal entry, 712. All the gold is safely stored and accounted for. Two years of backbreaking work schlepping those heavy bars. We had a little celebration, but then it's back to the grind. This paperwork won't pull itself out. Nobody else seems to think it's important. What, am I the only one who knows that it is? When the government comes looking for their gold, I don't want there to be any issues. Oh, that one didn't age very well. Wonder how he feels about all that wasted time. Out of the room and finally heading up these stairs, we find a ghoul? A ghoul? Shit, another ghoul. Don't shoot. Thanks for not shooting me. I know I look weird, like one of those feral ghoul monsters, but I'm normal, aside from the new skin condition, that is. Huh, <laughs> just like old Lou. I don't trust it. Who are you? I'm with those other guys. You know, AC, Slick, Garrison, and Carver are their real names. We're here to help. AC opened the door for us. Thank God. I thought I was gonna die here. Actually, we're from the government. We're here to help. <laughs> nice try. If you're government agents, I'm the after picture for acne cream. AC must trust you since he opened the door, so I'm gonna assume you're here to help. I'm Agent Chase with the Secret Service, digger to my friends. I was on the reactor team when it malfunctioned. A lot of them ended up looking like me, except their minds have melted too. The ones that didn't change are all dead now. I was able to stabilize the reactor, but it won't come online with the radiation levels this high. You're gonna have to vent the air from the chamber. That will clear the radioactive gas and probably kill all the things in there, too. Why haven't you already vented the reactor chamber? The radiation made all of them into feral ghouls. If I take any more, it might happen to me, too. What's the best way to get there? Don't go near the reactor. 
If the radiation doesn't get you, those things will. I'd sneak around the edges if I were you. Either way, you need to get to that room that overlooks the reactor. We are on it. Good luck. I'll wait here. On second thought, I'll wait on the other side of this door. With that, the ghoul moves behind us. Those feral ghouls creep me out. I might be Secret Service, but I'm just an engineer. I don't do guns. I hope you guys can get the power back on. As we step into this room, we see a path to the left and a path to the right. Heading forward, we can look out a window to see the reactor on the floor below us. On this console, we find Reginald Stone's journal. Shorty came to me complaining about being locked in the vault. He claimed the others were ready to replace Garrison as AC. I told him he's a whiner. Regs are regs, and the regs say Garrison is the AC, and we follow his orders. We stay here until the government gives us the all clear. Those of us that survived Shorty's mutiny have found a way to not go crazy. AC spends all of his time listening to the radio. Every month, there are more and more signals, but always just hicks spouting off about how they need water. And is anyone out there? Mercy practices her martial arts. I read. Mostly old manuals, but it's better than nothing. Digger tinkers with the equipment. His last creation was supposed to be an automated vacuum cleaner. When it ate AC's shoes, it ended up on the scrap heap. Slick explores. You'd think after over three years, there wouldn't be anything new to find. But you'd be wrong. Heading out the doorway to the left first, we arrive on a platform. There is a door to the left, but it's locked and requires a terminal. We see a staircase heading down to the reactor floor if we wanted to go in guns blazing. But perhaps we can do this with a little more subtlety. Back into the big room where we found the note, we can move across to go through the doorway to the other side. We arrive in a small room with ruined lockers and a little bit of scrap. There are two doors to the northeast. The door to the north leads into a control room. Here we find a hazmat suit, in case we wanted to go down to the reactor floor. And behind us, inside a console, is a decontamination control terminal. We find one option, the decontamination arch control. Everything looks good to go, so we can activate the decontamination arch. We hear it sputter to life, and we see it through the nearby window. Heading back out into the room with the lockers, we can open the door to the east, and this leads to a hallway with the decontamination arch. Through the archway, and passing through the adjoining room, we move out a door to the north, and it's here where my power armor character got found! <laughs> Well, so much for stealth. I'm not sure why I got discovered on my power armor character. Maybe it has to do with trying to sneak in power armor, or maybe it's because I turned on the decontamination arch, which was noisy. On my gunslinger, I didn't turn on the arch. And so when I got to this point, I was able to sneak on by. We see a staircase leading down and an elevated pathway leading to the west. I was likely going to get discovered if I went to the west, so instead we can turn north to head into a small room. Here we find a few workbenches, a tinkerer's workbench, an armor workbench, and a weapons workbench. The room opens up through a door to the west, and it's here where we can see that Wendigo that my power armor character killed, sort of hanging out over there. Don't want to wake him. We are now on the opposite side of the reactor. We find a door to the west near to the weapons workbench. Heading inside, we arrive in a long hallway that wraps all the way around the perimeter of the reactor floor. At the very end, we find that locked door that requires a terminal. From here, if we turn around, we find a door to the west that leads upstairs. At the top of the stairs, we see a break in the wall that we can use to peer out over the reactor floor. So many ghouls just milling about. Turning north towards the control room, we see a ramp to the east, which leads back down to the platform below. So we could have come up here instead of going through that long hallway, but the hallway was much safer. Then, passing through a door to the east, we arrive in the control room. We find a first aid kit here and a reactor security terminal locked with a skill level 3 lock. My cowgirl couldn't hack it, but my power armor character could. If we hack it, we learn that reactor security is powered down. Run emergency ventilation procedure to access auxiliary power. 
In the primary console facing south, we find the reactor ventilation terminal. Before running reactor ventilation procedure, make sure all personnel are in designated safe zones. These are the areas colored blue for your convenience. Thank you. Backing out and looking around, I think this is the blue room. I mean, the walls are blue. Does that mean we are safe? In the console, we find the emergency ventilation button. And when ready, we can push it. Warning. The reactor ventilation override has been activated. Please evacuate to the nearest safe zone, which are colored blue for your convenience. There are 10 seconds left until safe zones are sealed. And I was a little nervous. I, I mean, I guess I'm in the right spot. These walls are blue. Safe zone sealing in five, four, three, two, one. Doors closing. Okay, we chose wisely. Peering out the window, we can watch what happens. We hear a hissing sound, and then... Turrets pop up to kill the ghouls in the Wendigo. With the ghouls dead, we can now take a look at the reactor security terminal, which remember was locked with a skill level 3 lock, and it's from here that we at last have access to turret control, and we can turn off the turrets. But I couldn't do that on my cowgirl character, so heading back down to the reactor floor, Johnny and I took him out. Either way, we do get attacked by an Assaultron. <laughs> When the place is clear, we can find the gold processing room. We find it towards the west. Along the way, we find a horde of ghoul bodies lying on the ground. These were here even in my game where I disabled the turrets, so we know the turrets didn't kill these. These must be Secret Service agents who got caught in the reactor when it melted down. Heading through a door to the west, we wind through a hallway until we reach a room filled with gold. We did it! We actually did it! We found the gold! A bit of luck doesn't hurt either. Is this it? Where's the rest of it? It looks like the main vault is still sealed off. This is some sort of measuring or counting room. There is still a lot of bullion bars in here, though. This is a big win for Foundation. If, however, we come here with Johnny still alive... Wow, would you look at that? <laughs> you weren't joking about this being a big score. Makes me real sorry I've got to do this to you. Nothing personal. If I cut you out of the equation, that's more gold for me. Any last words? Why? After all we've been through. Glad you asked. I expected big things from you in the arena. But you let me down big time, buddy. And I can't imagine a future where we work together. And given your success here, that's something Meg will almost certainly expect. It's only a matter of time before Meg ditches me because you're willing to work for pennies or worse you get me killed did meg put you up to this meg's got nothing to do with it and she'll never know that you died heroically fighting off a horde of feral ghouls sacrificing yourself so that i could survive don't worry She'll know how generous you were, pledging your share of the gold to me with your dying breath. We can pass a charisma check of four to say, Come on, Johnny, buddy, pal, I'm sure we can work this out. Let's talk, my friend. Go on. I could use a laugh before you die. You're really gonna do me in like you did Hal? How's that going for you? Damn it. That was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. 
Hal was my partner, my best friend. I loved him like... like a brother. But if I'm being honest, I wouldn't miss you at all. I might even miss you less, since you went and mentioned Hal. Meg told me to keep an eye on you, go through with this, and she'll have your head. Uh... Oh, did she? That's nice, but I'm not worried. See, I know my way around Meg. If you catch my drift, it doesn't take much to stay on her good side. <laughs> I sincerely hope that's not the best you've got. If I die, I won't be able to help you on other missions. You. <laughs> You're just some vault trash wannabe scumbag. Believe me, you won't be missed. I don't care about the gold. You can just have my cut. Shit. Really? Had I known you were going to roll over that easy, I would have just asked. i tell you what, since I'm such a nice guy, I'll even let you keep a little. No need to thank me, just forget this ever happened, okay? Oh, I'm surprised he actually went for that. But uh, at this point, I kind of didn't want to give up my share of the gold. And I only had two options, to say thanks, I guess or to attack and say, Just how gullible are you? Did you really think I'd just give you my share? Oh, oh, you had me going there. New plan, we do this the hard way. Uh, done for. Uh, mother... Uh, you'll pay for that. Now he can apologize to Hal in person. On his body, we find a Western revolver and Johnny's password. At last, we can find out what was inside his terminal. Shame it had to end like this. All around us, stacked up on tables and push carts, are bars of gold bullion. In an end-of-dungeon steamer trunk against the southern wall, we find one stack of gold bullion, but this only gives us 100 gold bullion. We have to loot each and every one of these individually to complete this part of the quest. But this is kind of why we came, so I really don't mind. Though I did take an opportunity before looting it all to grab a few snapshots. All right, we've got the gold. Now to head up and talk with Digger. As soon as we arrive, he turns around and heads down the stairs. But when he reaches his companions... Ghoul! Wait, Mercy! It's me, Chase! I might look like them, but I'm still me inside. Chase? Holy shit! Stand down, Mercy. We'll hear him out. I don't think the regulations cover this situation. It was the radiation. It changed me. It changed a lot of us. Bubba, Mac, and a bunch of others all became ghouls, but crazy and bloodthirsty. They attacked Grills and Shiny, and the ones that didn't turn. Tore them to pieces before they even knew what was happening. What about you? How many humans did you kill? Zip it, Mercy. I'm asking the questions here. How come you're not one of them? I don't know. Maybe I didn't take as many reds. Maybe I'm genetically tougher. Maybe it's what I had for breakfast. We should kill it. It's not human anymore. What the fuck, Regs? That's Chase you're talking about. Not anymore, it isn't. That thing could turn on us at any moment. That's enough. None of us have any experience with these ghouls, but our new friend here does. Looks like we've got to help them make up their minds. First, we can go around to see what each and every one of them think. I'm not dangerous. You've got to tell them that. Digger is a ghoul now. What if he does something to my daughter? We can't take that chance. What are you looking at? I don't believe Digger would ever turn on us. But AC is in charge. It's his call. That is not Digger. Not anymore. That... That thing... Needs to die. And then talk to AC. You've dealt with these ghouls before. 
Is that really still Chase? Can we trust I'm not him? Dangerous. You've got to tell him that. We find three options. I was only able to choose two. We could say, it's too risky. Who knows what'll happen if he takes more rads? Sorry, Chase. We can't take that chance. No! In which case, they kill him. Or they try to kill him. Uh, it, it takes a little while. There we go. And we can find out how this made them feel. I hope every last one of those ghouls is gone. We heard the commotion, even down here. You did it! Thank God! What are you looking at? Or we can pass a charisma check of seven to say, he's harmless, you have my word. That's good to hear. I'd hate to lose someone with a security clearance. Chase, since you're radiation proof, your first job is to clean up the reactor area. When you're done, come see me. I'll take care of that right away. And we spare his life, and he heads back into the reactor. With that situation resolved, we can talk to AC. I see you have the gold. Offer them the deal. One thing at a time, Riggs. First of all, thank you for the rescue. Our supplies would have run out in a few more weeks. Riggs had an idea. Once we get back to the safe part of the vault, how about we trade you for that gold? We can't stop you from taking it, and we won't try. But we have some advanced military schematics that we'd be willing to trade for it. Why do you want the gold? We've been listening to the radio. It seems things are getting better up there. If we're gonna get things back to normal, the people will need a currency everyone agrees on. That's where we come in. We'll use all this gold to back that currency and we'll guarantee its value. It'll be a while before we're ready to start printing money. But in the meantime, we need to gather as much gold as possible. Sorry, we have other plans for the gold. Suit yourself. But if you change your mind later, we'll be here. Sure. I'd rather have a better gun than a hunk of gold. Good. Anytime you find some gold, just bring it to us. Regs will be your point man. He's got a list of equipment to trade for your gold. Not just guns, either. Here's an elevator key. You shouldn't have to traipse through this mess to get to us. Good luck out there. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Power's on. We can go home now. Either way, we gain the Vault 79 access key card and the door to the elevator slides up to the south. The Secret Service agents all walk towards the elevator, but I was interested in the operations room that they all came from because we find the door locked and the door says that it requires a key. In my live stream when I discovered this, I was frustrated that I couldn't get in and I didn't know what choices I made led to this door being locked. I was sure there was bound to be lore inside and indeed when I read up on the place before shooting my raider footage, I learned that there are two pieces of lore inside, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't make the same mistakes again. However, going through this experience with my raider character led to the same result. They go towards the elevator and this door does not unlock. I read that it's supposed to unlock as soon as we resolve things with Digger, but it didn't. I tried fast traveling and coming back. I tried switching servers. This door would not unlock. But thankfully, data miners have data mined the contents of the lore we find in this room and published it online. So instead, I'm just going to read to you the two pieces of lore that's supposed to be inside. And it's all lore concerning the small girl we find inside the vault. The first is called Mercedes Stern's Journal. Pregnant. I'm stinking pregnant. I can't believe I let this happen. This is no place to raise a child. I'm not mother material, never have been. I haven't told anyone yet, not even the father. It'll be obvious soon enough. Being locked in the vault for almost 15 years does strange things to people. We've all retreated into our own sections of the vault. We barely speak. I'm the opposite of a social butterfly, but I found myself finding excuses to visit anyone once in a while just to hear another human's voice. AC is never going to let us get out of here. We are all going to die in this place. We learn what happened after the child was born in Chase Terrier's journal. A child is a miracle. A year ago, when Mercy told us she was pregnant, I feared the worst. 
What possible good could come from a child born inside a vault and raised by a bunch of government agents? It turns out she could save them from themselves. We had all turned inward for over 15 years, isolating ourselves from each other. Less than half of us remain of the originals. Some took their own lives. Too many died in the mutiny. Now we begin to come together for Mercy's sake. Slick took care of Mercy, helping her despite her objections and sometimes blistering tirades. Rags read everything he could about how to deliver a child. He did a magnificent job. I built a crib and new toys for our agent to be. Even AC got into the spirit, arranging for a baby shower, although I have to use the term loosely. Magdalene Stern will be celebrating her first birthday today. Maggie saved us from each other. We came together to help raise this child. Mercy still hasn't told us who the father is, and none of the men have come forward to claim her. That's okay. She belongs to all of us, and we belong to her. We got the impression from her note that Mercy knew who the father was, but it looks like she's keeping that secret to herself. And that is all the lore that's left in Vault 79. When we're done here, we can leave, but once we leave, we can never come back. We've got to explore as much as we can and take as much with us as we can now. When we're ready, we can follow the agents up the stairs, through a room covered in junk, and open the elevator door to go to Gold Vault Operations. When we arrive, if we sided with Foundation, we find the agents in their suits. However, if we sided with Crater, there is a known bug. We can arrive to find everyone in their underwear, and they don't talk to us, which means we can't complete the quest. When this happened to me, I did some Googling, and I found several other people complaining of the same issue. The solution is to just fast travel away and then come back. If we take the elevator down into Vault 79, the game teleports us to the room just outside of operations, and from there we can walk to the elevator and head back to the operations center. Ah, magnificent, isn't it? All that precious gold just waiting to become currency in the new world. That can't happen until we iron out a few things. I couldn't agree more. Who are you? Paige. I speak for Foundation. I know y'all weren't gonna start this party without me. Ain't that right, 7-6? Who are you? Name's Meg. I run the crater. And this is my crew. I've already promised the gold to your agent over there. Assuming that's what you're here for, you two will have to work it out. Remember our arrangement. I'm here to collect. We had ourselves an agreement, 7-6. I expect you to honor it. This is the most important decision we make during the quest. It's basically a choice of what we'd rather grind, reputation or gold. We'll have to grind both, but this choice makes us grind less of one. If we choose to keep our word, we get a huge dose of reputation for the faction we chose to side with. If we share the wealth, we gain a modest amount of reputation with both factions, but not as much reputation with the faction we chose to side with had we given them their full share. If we choose the final option, we get more gold bullion, reducing the amount of gold bullion we need to farm. But we lose reputation with the faction we chose to side with, and we don't gain any with the faction we chose not to side with which means that in order to buy from their shops, we have to farm more reputation with that faction. Having done this grind on one character already, I found that bullion, at least for the things I wanted to buy, was easier to come by. Whereas even after I had already ground for the bullion I needed, I still had days and weeks more of grinding to do to satisfy the reputation requirement. So in my opinion, it's best to maximize your reputation gain here with the faction you chose to side with. Now the flip side to this argument is that once you maximize your reputation with a faction, you never have to gain any more of it. 
you get unfettered access to their bullion shops. But to use those shops, you'll always need more gold bullion. So one could argue that if you're planning to buy a lot of stuff from these shops and your time investment isn't really that important to you, then the wisest choice may be to get as much gold bullion now that you can. And then just spend the days, weeks, or even months necessary to raise your reputation with both factions so that once you maximize reputation, you've got more gold to buy more stuff with. I think that may be a great solution for people who are wanting to walk away with a lot of stuff from the shops. But for me, I really only wanted one gun, maybe some power armor. It was more important to me to raise my reputation as fast as possible so I could start spending my gold bullion on the items I wanted, which incidentally were locked behind a maximum reputation gate. That's why for both of my characters, I chose to say, here's your half, just like I promised, 500 bars. Thank you. Foundation and the Overseer will put this to good use. You done good, 7-6. We'll be sitting pretty for a while. All right, time to haul the gold back to Crater and put it somewhere safe. With that, we complete the quest, Secrets Revealed. Get a huge dose of Crater or Foundation reputation, get a randomly generated three-star legendary item, and get an introduction to gold bullion. Before heading out, we can talk with Jen. Hey, I can't believe we did it. I mean, I believed in us, but we're still us, you know? Yeah, I hear ya. So, you doing all right? I'm good. Uh, Sue's kind of itchy, though. No, but seriously, I knew we could do it. Never had a doubt. What are you gonna do now? I'm gonna help my mom get settled in at Foundation and show her all our decadent consumerist ways. Samuel told us about a doctor who can change your face. So we might look at doing that down the road, if they can do it for a ghoul. Going to do anything with that suit? Mom and I are going to put it on some skeleton and burn it up. Hopefully that will throw off anyone who cares to look off her trail. It's just too risky to keep around. Anyway, Penny said it's really unsafe to wear, even if we could remove the trackers and biometric requirements. Goodbye, Jen. Bye! I'll see you around. Even if we're not doing anything wild and heroic like this. Don't mind Maggie. We can always just hang out. Note that her dialogue here is probably a lot different based on the decisions we made during the Foundation questline. For example, if we let her mother die. Remember, if we do that, she says she's gonna leave. Then we can talk to Sergeant Radcliffe. Hey, I guess that's it, huh? Yeah, we did it. Nobody got killed either. Not a bad day. Even that ghoul made it, despite my dumb ass. I thought about it, and you're right, you know. I was letting my fear take a hold of me. It was stupid. Damn it, stop trying to make me a better person. Feeling things sucks. I just want to make more jokes and less feelings, okay? Do you know if you're all sticking around Foundation now? Definitely. We all need a vacation. Just retirement. Feels needs retirement, sure. He might not look as old as he is, but that's just all the preservatives and the junk food we've been living on. I'd really like to settle down and get an idyllic farm somewhere around here. Wrestling with weapons, of course. But also, you know, I deal it. Goodbye, Radcliffe. Yeah, see you around, buddy. And then we can talk to Paige. Well, it's done. It's hard to believe that we actually did it, you know? But it was worth it. We sure made a great team. We did. I knew we could pull it off with the right crew. But you certainly did a hell of a job yourself. It's our job to take Just a thinking about everything we can do now is exciting. Seriously, thank you. The future's looking brighter than I ever expected. How do you feel about your cut? It's really exciting. There's so much we can do to really genuinely improve folks' lives in Foundation. Thanks for sticking with us, for caring about what happens to Foundation. You couldn't have asked for more. What are you gonna do now? We got some plans to disassemble some water and air purifiers, and move them back to the settlement, get some other infrastructure set up. <laughs> Nothing too exciting for someone like you, I'm sure. Goodbye, Paige. Bye. I'll see you around Foundation later, right? Or if we went the Raider route, the only person we find here with us is Meg. A76, really pulled it off. See, I knew I just had to have a little faith in you. Wait, wait, hold up. Where the hell is Johnny? Strangely enough, even though I killed him, I didn't find an option to say so. And I think that may be because the first thing that happened in my game save is he died while trying to hack the terminal. 
It was after leaving the vault and coming back that I was able to play through it again so that he survived. Looks like that's not reflected here in my dialogue options. So I can say his own arrogance got the best of him when trying to hack the security system. And he got himself killed. Damn. I can't say that's surprising. I don't think there's a more appropriate way for that man to have bit the dust. It doesn't make the news any easier to bear. It's a real shame. Let that be a lesson, though. Having a big head can get you killed. What are you gonna do with the gold? Gold used to mean everything. The place in my bed said it still does to some people. The world ran on gold. With gold comes respect. And with respect comes power. We can use it to influence a lot of people out there. Worst case, we can trade for some high-tech weapons and finally stop using homemade crap that breaks all the time. One way or another, we're gonna rule the wasteland. How do you think the job went? I should be happier about it all, but I can't stop thinking about Johnny. Somehow I always knew that his own ego would be his downfall. I didn't think it'd go down like that. Probably should have been more careful not to feed it. Maybe it'd still be around, I don't know. At least we can all learn from it. Don't let your head get too big for your own good. Now what? Now we take the gold back to Crater and stash it away somewhere safe until we find a use for it. The rest of the plan's the same as it was grow our settlement, assert our dominance in the wasteland, and kill anyone who threatens us. The goal's just a means to that end. One that's gonna make our lives a whole hell of a lot easier. Well, the job's done. I think it's time for us to part ways. Hey, now, don't you be a stranger around Crater, yeah? I'm sure your particular set of skills could come in handy. You never know when our interests will align like this again. Speaking of, I never did ask you what your interest in the gold was all about. You want a dish? The Overseer has a plan to re-establish currency. I'm doing it for America. <laughs> That's a good one. The America I knew was never worth fighting for, if you ask me. I'm glad the establishment got all blown to hell. But hey, you're giving me an idea now. Maybe we beat your friend to it and establish our own currency first. Then everyone will have to bow to us. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't it? I don't really know yet. Well, you got time to figure it all out. Word of advice, though. Don't sit on it too long. Word's gonna spread that you got your own stash of gold. And <laughs> you don't got an army like I do. You better be prepared to keep it safe from other greedy, opportunistic wastelanders out there. That's for me to know. All right, I get you. You don't have to tell me. I'm sure you got good reasons. Just do me a solid. Don't do anything that would get in the way of my own plans, you dig? Probably the same as you. Use it to buy weapons and power. Smart move. I bet these folks here have loads of the stuff laying around they'd be willing to part with in exchange for some of their own gold. Hell, we may even have some good stuff back at Crater we'd be willing to trade for. I just always wanted a huge pile of gold. Hey, I ain't gonna judge you for that. You do your own thing. I dig it. Well, I'm sure I'll be seeing y'all around. Good luck with everything, 7-6. Now that we've checked in with our factions, we can talk with these secret service guys. Starting with AC. Keep your hands where we can see them. My agents are trained to shoot first and ask questions of the survivors. I've only got a minute. Make it quick. So what is this place? Gold Vault Operations. We keep tabs on all the gold from here. We have total security. Cameras, triple-coated doors, hack-proof automation. The whole works. I know what you're thinking. Don't even try it. What do you do here? Agent in charge. That's why they call me AC. I direct this whole operation. It's my job to try and establish a new, gold-backed currency. We'll bring civilization back to this corner of the country. What do you call that guy, Slick? You mean Cole Carver? Because he's a smooth talker. I've never been one for community relations, but he's got a real knack for it. Just as well. I'd rather not deal with the rabble anyway. No offense. Appreciate your time, AC. Good. Anytime you find some gold, just bring it to us. Regs will be your point man. He's got a list of equipment to trade for your gold. Not just guns, either. Next, we can talk to a small girl walking around the vault named Pita. What are you looking at? That's some tough talk for a little girl. And I can back it up, you waste of space. My mom taught me how to shoot when I was four years old. 
I once punched Slick in the nuts just for laughing at me. <laughs> I could handle you with one hand while I brush my toy pony with the other. Is Mercy your mom? Yes, she is. She's the toughest, meanest fighter you'll ever meet. Do you help out around here? You bet. I help my mom keep the peace. Huh. Shot three wastelanders just like you last week. They talk too much. Just like you. Goodbye, sweetie. Oh, nothing, huh? Okay. Next, we can talk to Peter's mom, Your Mercy. Son. Yeah? Does anyone eat or sleep around here? If necessary. But we do have quarters elsewhere in the vault. Gotta have somewhere to hang our guns at night. They're off limits to civilians, though. What are you in charge of? Security. I'm the muscle. I do whatever it takes to keep visitors like you in line. I was a three-time marksman champion and held the course record for simulation kills and hostage drills. Never got to actually use in the field before the bombs dropped. What's the deal with the kid? Watch it. That's my daughter, Maggie. They call her PETA, which stands for... Never mind. She's got attitude. She'll go far in this new world. If I can keep her alive long enough. Try not to push her buttons, though. I had to take away her bullets because she tried to shoot a bot that pissed her off. Take care, Mercy. If you're bored, go see Dirk. He's the AC. Agent in charge? Then moving left, we can talk with Regs. Agents live by rules. Cole seems to have forgotten that. Yeah, we don't call him slick for nothing. If you don't have the gold bullion, I can't requisition any equipment for you. You take gold bullion? I do now. Thanks to you, we had to give up our exclusive on it. We'll get it back one bar at a time, though. Trading it for equipment is good incentive. So where do you keep all of the equipment? Nice try. That's classified. You ask me that again and I'll make you fill your requisition forms out in triplicate. Without a pen. Can you tell me about AC? But He's the agent in charge. Go Gotta have a strict chain of command. Or this place will fall apart. His emergency field promotion papers were filled out and filed according to Secret Service regulations. All perfectly proper. So long, Regs. Every little bit of gold we put in the vault helps. Then, trading with him, we can see some of the equipment he sells. He doesn't sell any equipment, actually. Instead, he sells plans to craft equipment. Even after buying these with gold bullion, we'll still have to farm the ingredients necessary to craft the items. We see that the Secret Service had quite a stash of interesting stuff. The Gauss Pistol from Fallout 2 makes a return here in Vault 79. The plan goes for 250 gold bullion, and each of its mods are nearly as expensive. One of its receivers is 200 gold bullion. To craft the Gauss Pistol and have access to all of its mods would cost 1,350 gold bullion. Now you see what I'm saying about that grind. The Plasma Caster from Fallout New Vegas is back with its own mods, and we find plans for a new type of armor called the Secret Service Aerodynamic Armor with its own host of mods. There's also a jetpack for the Secret Service armor that's not a power armor jetpack. It's a jetpack you can strap to your back if you're wearing the Secret Service armor. We find plans for a new solar armor set. It's not really new. This is the armor that was removed from Vault 94 when they repurposed that vault. At least they didn't remove it from the game completely, but now we have to buy it with gold bullion. The power armor that used to be in Vault 94, the Strangler Heart armor, is now available here. What Strangler Heart power armor is doing in a vault that's been sealed for 25 years is, well, we probably shouldn't ask questions like that. And then we find a brand new type of power armor, the T-65 suit of power armor. To gain the plans necessary to craft a full suit of T-65 power armor, ignoring all mods like the jetpack for now, would cost 6,900 
gold bullion. Remember, we just walked away with 500 gold bullion. Couple that with the fact that we can only earn 200 gold bullion per day before we hit a cap means that to get a full suit of this power armor would take over 34 solid days of grinding 200 gold bullion every day, not including the jetpack or any other mods. But this is just one of the new gold bullion vendors in Fallout 76. Creator has a vendor, and Foundation has a vendor. We'll further explore the gold bullion topic in other videos. But continuing to explore the operations center, we find Slick sitting on a bench in the corner. Don't mind the others. People's skills aren't their strong suit. Thanks for pulling our fat out of the fire in the vault. Exactly how much gold is there? That's classified. Let's just say all of it. What's your role here? I'm a liaison. Working with people? The others aren't so good with that. You know. All serious. Shoot first, arrest later. That's why I do most of the talking. Keeps everything from blowing up in our faces. So what's the deal with Regs? His full name is Reginald Stone, but we all call him Regs. He was never field agent material, like Mercy and me. But he's a great requisitions guy. Just mind your P's and Q's. He's totally by the books. Thanks, Slick. If you ever need to talk, I'm here. And with that, we've met all of the residents of Vault 79. And this operations center is all we can see of the vault from now on. If we go back to the elevator, we now see that we can only reach Appalachia. The elevator puts us out in a shack just south of the mysterious cave. If we go back to the mysterious cave on a character who sided with Foundation, nothing changes. We see that the door is still sealed. If we go back with a character who sided with the raiders from Crater, we see that rubble has caved in and completely covered up the hole. If we go back to the basement of Freddy Fears with a character who sided with Foundation, we see that the hole that the Motherlode dug is also filled in with rubble. Guess we can't explore that mole miner city, but we're not done. We still have a few loose ends to tie up, but I'm all out of time. In our next episode, we'll discover the ramifications of our choices in Vault 79, and we'll see how both factions have changed. We'll finally make our decision with Lou and see what was inside Johnny's terminal. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all of my YouTube members and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.